top story at this hour. The unprecedented assault on the U.S. Capitol Hill left the entire world stunned. Now, new visual evidence that the Democrats presented in the Senate shows graphic details about how Trump supporters sought to block peaceful transfer of power. The unreleased footage from security cameras in the Capitol building shows brutal attacks on police officers as they try to safeguard senators from Trump's loyalists. Take a look. In this new security video, you can see the mob attacking officers with a crutch, a hockey stick, a bullhorn, and a Trump flag. I want to show you that same attack from the officer's perspective from his body camera footage. I'm sorry I have to show you the next video, but in it you will see how blessed we were that on that hellish day we had a peacemaker like Officer Hodges protecting our lives, our staff's lives, this capital and the certification process. May we do all we can in this chamber to make sure that never happens again. Democrats also showed Republican Senator Mitt Romney running to safety after last-minute warnings from a Capitol Police officer. In another shocking and chilling clip, former Vice President Mike Pence was being briefed and ushered to safety along with his family. Take a look. In this security footage, you can see Officer Goodman running to respond to the initial breach. Officer Goodman passes Senator Mitt Romney and directs him to turn around in order to get to safety. As the rioters reached the top of the stairs, they were within 100 feet of where the vice president was sheltering with his family. The rioter seen carrying a baseball bat in this video is the same one we saw moments ago breaching the window on the first floor. While all of this was going on, Vice President Pence was still in the room near the Senate chamber. It was not until 2.26 that he was evacuated to a secure location. This next security video shows that evacuation. His movements are depicted by the orange dot in our model. The red and blue dots represents the location where the mob and Officer Goodman were and where Officer Goodman led the mob away from the chamber just moments ago. You can see Vice President Pence and his family quickly move down the stairs. The Vice President turns around briefly as he's headed down. As Pence was being evacuated, rioters started to spread throughout the Capitol. Those inside helped other rioters break in through doors in several locations around this entire building. And the mob was looking for Vice President Pence because of his patriotism, because the Vice President had refused to do 
with the president demand and overturn the election results. During the assault on the Capitol, extremists reportedly coordinated online and discussed how they could hunt down the vice president. Journalists in the Capitol reported they heard rioters say they were looking for Pence in order to execute him. For more on the story, our correspondent Nick Harper is now joining us live from Washington, D.C. with more updates. Nick, welcome to Beyond. Now, the House impeachment managers are presenting their case against former President Donald Trump, and they have shown new violent security footage from the U.S. Capitol that we just saw. This footage, of course, is quite provocative and significant. Will this increase Trump's chances of getting convicted? Well, potentially they could for a second day running there. The Democrats showing previously unseen footage, really showing the brutality of that day, the visceral feelings that many of the senators would have felt. And I think that's really what the Democrats are aiming for. Remember, the senators who are sitting in the Senate chamber listening to that evidence are the jurors in this case. They are the people who need to decide at the end if Donald Trump is guilty. And of course, they are also the same people who lived through that day. The Democrats are trying to remind them of the threat level that they faced on January the 6th during the course of the riot. The fact that the angry mob uh, of Donald Trump supporters were just outside the doors of the chamber as they were trying to evacuate. That some of those men had plans to assassinate and kill lawmakers. So Democrats are trying to remind the senators of this in the hopes that they'll be able to pull more Republicans over to their side. But remember, they need seven 17 Republicans in order to achieve a two-thirds majority. That's the majority they need to get to convict Donald Trump. Uh, right. It will be somewhat hard. We saw a vote just yesterday on Tuesday, uh, and there were only six Republicans who were saying that this whole trial was unconstitutional. Six is still a long way off that magic number of 17, which the Democrats will need uh, to get those Republicans to join them. Right, now, Nick, we heard a few Republicans yesterday calling Trump's defense poor and lackluster. What is Trump's defense strategy here, and will he be successful in going scot-free? Well, it will be certainly very difficult, because uh, we have seen these graphic uh, videos, and Donald Trump's lawyers really don't have anything of that magnitude to counter the videos that are being shown on the Senate floor. You're right, uh, he, two of his lawyers uh, gave their opening uh, presentation of the case on Tuesday. Some Republicans said that they had rambled, that they looked unfocused and unprepared. Mm -hmm. Their main objective is to show that Donald Trump was uh, exercising his right to free speech, that he was able to make those comments ahead of the riot because he's an American citizen and covered by First Amendment rights. They also say that the attackers had planned this riot for days beforehand. It wasn't the president, they say, and his speech that incited the violence. These people had planned that in advance. So they will try and very much push back at those claims from the Democrats that Donald Trump was the man who caused and encouraged this violence that we saw uh, on Capitol Hill. Right, Nick, thanks for these inputs. We request you to stay with us on this broadcast. We'd also like you to be, uh, weigh in on uh, President Biden's defense strategy. Now, U.S. President Joe Biden has announced the formation of a Pentagon task force to review the country's China strategy. Biden, who was accompanied by Vice President Kamala Harris, visited the Pentagon for the first time since becoming president. Biden announced that he has ordered an immediate review of the country's military strategic approach to China's challenges. Today, I was briefed on a new uh, DOD-wide China task force that Secretary Austin is standing up to look at our strategy and operational concepts, technology and force posture, and so much more. The task force will work quickly, drawing on civilian and military experts across the department to provide, within the next few months, recommendations to Senator Austin on key priorities and decision points so that we can chart a strong path forward on China-related matters. New Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin briefed the president on how the U.S. is prepared to deter China in the Pacific. Last week, the U.S. Is moving its, was moving its aircraft carrier USS Nimitz and its carrier strike group to the Indo-Pacific region. Tensions between the two sides increased in the latter stages of the Trump presidency. The Biden administration will be continuing the tough approach on China on issues related to trade, regional security and human rights. Last week, the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, had said that the U.S. will stand with South Asian countries against China's pressure. He had also said that the U.S. engagement in the region will continue. 
Let's now go again to our correspondent Nick Harper from Washington DC who's still with us on this broadcast. Nick, thanks for staying on. Now let's shift our focus now to uh, President Biden's defense strategy. Now Biden has announced that the Department of Defense has established a task force focused on US strategy towards China in particular. Tell us more about the same and will the new administration continue the Trump regime's hard stance against China? Yeah, very interesting to note that this was his first visit to the Pentagon. It was his first defense speech. And the country that he took aim on was China. We knew that it was going to be the country that Joe Biden was going to have to confront and make his priority. This speech essentially formalized this. The fact that he wants to create this task force to look at the threat that China poses suggests that he will want to counter that threat during the course of his four-year presidency. And yes, he is likely to continue the tough stance that we saw during President Trump's time in office. But he's likely to take it in other directions, not just pushing the issue of trade, but also taking on human rights and the militarization in the South China Sea, two issues that President Trump didn't really broach with the Chinese during the course of his presidency. However, we do know that Joe Biden will want to try and do that with allies in a multilateral type of way, unlike what we saw with Donald Trump, who was much more about the unilateral uh, way of doing things. Of course, Joe Biden has already uh, been in discussions uh, with India and also uh, looking to build the defense strategy right. uh, of the Quad. India, Australia, Japan and the United States to try and counter China. We're likely to see that push continue uh, over the coming weeks from President Biden. Right, Nick, we leave it there. Thank you so much for all your inputs and thank you for joining us.